Hi everybody, hope you're doing marvellously well. We're very lucky for two reasons. Well, firstly, we're sitting with Igor from Audio Movers. How the devil are you? Nice. Thank I'm also you. very Thanks. fortunate to be sitting in uh, Abbey Road doing this, which is always a, a lovely thing. Now, we've talked on the channel before about Omnibus, and I think it was probably either the first or second version, but this is version number three. That's correct, yes. That's an update to version uh, new Omnibus, which will have uh, networking capabilities and a lot more. Can you give us the, because probably a lot of people watching this have never even heard of it, so can you give us like the sort of 30 second elevator pitch to what Omnibus does? So Omnibus is a virtual patch bay that allows you to uh, send audio from different sound sources uh, to different destinations and you can combine uh, several sources to one destination and vice versa. So it's literally like patch bay in a studio but within your machine and the new version will expand it and you will be able to connect several machines together. It works only on Mac, first yep. of all. It's Mac only application. So with any Mac that you have, they all have built-in AVB protocol, which is not easily accessible to people. But in this version, we kind of make it much easier to configure and utilize Omnibus for routing needs. So one of the use cases that this should help uh, is, for example, if you have a studio with Omnibus installed and you have guests who need to play back something, now instead of like using a 3.5 millimeter jack or something like uh, some analog connection, you can simply plug in Ethernet cable without installing anything. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, so this is the beauty of AVB and uh, the, the, the fact that it's actually included in every macOS system. And you can use only one Omnibus as a configuration tool for that. Would you want to sort of show us how that is possible? When you install Omnibus, it installs uh, for virtual drivers. The new update basically changes the virtual driver configuration. So now every driver is uh, up to 256 channels, but you can select any number, whatever configuration is needed for your specific needs, you can easily edit. So for example, let's say we add in 16 channel driver. So now this driver is available to any audio software in a system, including system output. So let's say if you run Pro Tools or any other DAW, you can pick it up as your output device or input device. When you have virtual device and you work with it as your output device, let's set it up as a system output. So this is Omnibus B that we added. So now YouTube uses uh, Omnibus device as output device and you can see here it goes yep. to channels one and two and uh, you can route it to any output. So on the left side you see outputs yep. of software or inputs of hardware devices, uh, basically sources of your audio and here at the top you see destination. So if you want to hear something, we can use Pro Tools HDX as an output simply by clicking on the places. It will be routed. Great. You can hear it. Again, it can be uh, up to 256 channels each driver, and we have now up to four drivers. So treat me like an idiot, because I am. If you install this on your computer, what does it do? It sits there and it reads every single piece of hardware that's connected to it. How, how, how does it do that process? That's correct. So basically it uh, scans your audio system and whenever you plug in anything or unplug, it will update the uh, list of devices that you have. It does it automatically without you telling it to do it? Yes, yes. That's good. Would, uh, that's smart. So yeah, and if you, in case if you had device that is in some sort of routing that you use right now, so it will, when you unplug it and plug it back in, it will return to the routing that you made before. Well, I like that because one, one of my fears would be with, with, with something like this, if it was something you have to com continually configure, it just becomes another headache. But if it's doing it for you and it's analyzing what's there, that's huge. Yeah, in the new update, what we actually allow people to do now is to add devices that you need. So for example, if you don't, you have a lot of devices and sound engineers have different kind of needs and sure. uh, several USB devices or maybe like uh, a PCI uh, interfaces, so you can add only devices that you actually need for your work. You basically only add the things that you do want. Exactly. And remove yeah, so the things you don't. Yeah, so for example, if I don't need more than two virtual devices, I can use just two, but I can have up to four in this case, and if I need only two channels for my specific needs from virtual device, I can use only two channels. We have 
AVB configurator here. Yeah. Okay. And you can create based on Ethernet adapter that you have. You can create uh, AVB device with configuration up to 256 channels. Amazing. Um, let's say four channels. You can name it uh, Omnibus uh, AVB device Mac Pro, and you simply create it, and it will create four channels AVB device, which will be available as uh, audio device in your system. Here it is. So now we can use this device as a receiver or transmitter from any other place. So we have another machine here, which I set up before. I'm not going to route it right now, but basically we have, we configured uh, AVB device on this machine. Yep. I'm routing my output from Apple Music here. Okay. Multi-channel output, Atmos playback to uh, AVB device which transmits audio through network cable to this machine. And I route it here to Omnibus A device so I can record it in, into Pro Tools or I have route into Pro Tools HDX output which we can hear again here. I'm going to remove this from Omnibus so this is the AVB route from this machine. It's a very low latency communication. It's uh, below two milliseconds. So you can use That's fantastic. different DWs. You can connect mm. them in multi-channel way. You have a built-in sample rate converter into Omnibus. So for example, if you run in your mixing session for whatever reason, a different sample rate from your uh, production session, like from Ableton that someone comes over and connects to you, it will convert it in real time automatically and play back normally. Another protocol that we support is NDI, which works in a similar fashion, but in this case with NDI, you have to have both machines with Omnibus installed, or you have to have something that supports NDI protocol on another machine. So whenever you have NDI machine, in this case, I'm gonna use Omnibus as an NDI device. So I'm just adding uh, NDI transmitter, in a similar fashion, it uh, can be configured to anything up to 128 channels. Uh, we have, in addition to that, a buffer size, and it, it's not low latency communication with NDI. But for some use cases, like if you wish to use Wi-Fi mm -hmm. to transmit audio to your main machine, you could use that. Uh, or you can use wired network as well. Mm -hmm. It will allow you to decrease latency to, you know, two milliseconds or five milliseconds. And routing happens in the same fashion. You pick up NDI output on this machine in another machine, and you can hear to that audio. Just to clarify, one of the things for an, an engineer where basically Omnibus is, is here on a studio computer. So you're a traveling engineer, you walk in, you've got your laptop, you've got, I don't know, a 96 channel mix ready to go, and you want a quick way to configure it and actually make it appear out of their Pro Tools, out of the, whatever system they're using on their Mac. I mean, that is really what it's about. You don't need Omnibus as a traveling engineer, but the studio would need it, correct? Exactly, yeah. So if you have a uh, Mac OS yeah. machine, uh, it has AVB pre-installed. So as long as you have uh, AVB compatible Ethernet adapter, which most of the Mac systems have, except laptops, and for laptops you can either buy AVB to Thunderbolt adapter or uh, something like that, yeah. uh, or there are several exist in the market. You just plug it in, and the main omnibus will configure input and output device for you, so it will appear in your system as audio I/O, which you can use as your. Uh, playback engine. So if you're going to use uh, Pro Tools with HDX card, it will grab the HDX card, so it won't be available for yeah. Omnibus, because that's the way Pro Tools works. Yeah, yeah. But what you can do, for example, if you have Pro Tools, you can configure it, the uh, playback engine to uh, work with one of the uh, virtual devices, in this yeah. case Omnibus A, and then Omnibus will be router to and from HDX cards. So Again, as an example, I'm going to play back something here on this machine. 
as previously i'm gonna remove this route to hdx because right now uh, yeah so it comes from this laptop yeah through network goes into omnibus a so we receive it here in uh, one of the channels through omnibus so you can record it and then the output goes to again omnibus a that was sent as an immersive session correct yeah but, but, but i'm converting it into a stereo just for the sake of uh, yeah yeah. Uh, you know, we can do it for multi-channel, but here's the output from Pro Tools, yeah. and I can assign it to HDX, and uh, this is it. Wonderful. Are we limited by how many channels we can simultaneously um, put in? Yeah, so it depends on the way you configure the network, but yeah. you can safely assume that you can run up to 256 channels wow. if you connect point to point without any switch. So no audible degradation. So if I decide I want to come in with my session and it's got you know 100 tracks, I can transfer that in real time into exactly. that and record a yeah. stream. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Yeah, I like that a lot. And that's literally done with the cable. That's not having to, yeah. Yeah, you don't need to buy any expensive equipment. So yeah. this is like very old uh, Apple. Right uh, adapter. In this case, it transform like transmits to uh, Thunderbolt. Yep. Then to Thunderbolt two. Then to Ethernet, and it's connected to. Right. You know what I like about this, kids. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, but what this will be really good for is the guy that comes in, and you can tell. Hopefully, this you're going to say yes. The guy that comes in with the craziest routing, the most insane amount of plugins and weird random instruments that you would have to go out and spend $10,000 trying to acquire all their plugins and everything. They, they can, you can now play it back through, correct? Exactly. And capture all of it with all the EQ on, all the moves on, everything, and then you'll have a session. Yeah, you, you can literally create like stamps or, uh, create or just stamps. audio files, yeah. That's, yeah, that's huge. That's so I think for 250 bucks, it's almost worth having your second Mac going and print, printing stems in real time. <laughs> Just don't yeah, start yeah. thinking about it. It, it. it could be a really great way of, of, of printing, your, printing your stems. If you've got a template that you can use to do that, it might be actually quite, quite a nifty way of doing it. But definitely a great way of capturing somebody else's stuff, when, especially if you, you, for mixing. People have done overdubs. I've done many, many sessions where every single person in the room has done some kind of overdub at their home studio at some point, or is sitting there with their laptop, you know, writing a drum beat while you're writing the song with somebody else. Yeah, so here I have, for example, uh, again, you can save all your uh, routings to snapshots. Yeah. So I have another snapshot in this case, where which picks up audio from my Logic session. Here it is, and we're running... Uh, Virtual synth here, and it just plays back again to Pro Tools. Another great thing, yeah. Just from one DAW speaking to the other one. Exactly. I think the 250 bucks might, after about two or three sessions, you've you've made your money back, and all the time that it would have taken you to try to figure out how to do all the transfers. Yeah. Pretty nifty. Yeah. I like that. So the new version will allow you to uh, split audio if you want to from specific applications. So. For example, this is system output goes to Omnibus B, uh, yeah. channels one and two. But if you have several applications, system applications, the, where you cannot set up separate output levels, so you cannot se set separate ways where audio goes, because like everything yeah. goes to system output. So we allow to split audio. Now you see uh, applications. So when you add Google Chrome as an output, yeah. it basically takes it into separate output. Right. Uh, creates like a virtual, another separate out, a virtual device, and you can route it to different places, for example. Just to be dumb, you just open what, you know, Safari or Google, and it, you don't have to set any, any settings in there. It will know what Safari is, it will know what Google is. Yeah, so right now you can nice. see that it doesn't appear here, Safari. Yeah. If we start Safari, which for some reason we cannot run in this system, so yeah. Apple Music. Uh, should register itself as a as an application with audio output, and here it is, and it appears as a different set of outputs, which can go to That's yet amazing. another output.
Igor, thanks ever so much. Thank you for coming. Thank you. If you look down below here, there will be a link for a seven-day free trial of Omnibus, and you can try it out for yourself. Thanks, everyone. So long, farewell. Happy to say an au revoir. Adios. Ciao. Goodbye.